So, thanks and uh, welcome also for me to this morning. And um, um, yeah, um, thanks for the introduction, Peter. Um, as you said, that uh, a lot of topics will be technical today. Um, I think his talk and my talk are the only talks that are not technical, right? So, <laughs> so bear with me. It's a little um, business driven, but also probably still very interesting for you guys. Um, so my title is is very simple. It's called Access Springer AI. So uh, what the heck do I have to do with what, what I have to do with Access Springer? Because uh, I'm clearly ahead of data science at Idealo, right? Um, Idealo belongs to Access Springer. But uh, I'm coming to the topic why it is important for us and maybe also for you guys in the future. And um, I'm talking about the idea that I came up, um, I think around mid last year, right? And then um, yeah. Just to introduce myself again, because some of you might not know me, uh, I'm currently heading the data science team at Iado. Um, my team is also here today, so we have a couple of topics that we'd like to present as well. Um, before that, I used to work for Pivotal Labs, which is a US software company, and um, then also some time ago I was at Accenture. Um, I'm going to leave uh, Iado actually quite soon, so I'm going to start at uh, Ideas Engineering um, very soon to, to uh, actually establish Access Spring AI and I'm going to talk about the idea um, yeah, soon and later. Um, before that, oh, this is also me, so um, I have a lot of experience actually also from you know, doing a lot of fun projects like object detection or anything else or just creating guns to really like you know, real use cases that is actually uh, in production, right? So for example in the past I also, one of the, my favorite projects was actually hydroplanic prediction. So this is something very dangerous in a car and I was working with this, um, with an automotive car company with this. And basically, uh, basically, you know, we shortened the time to production in within two years because if you know how long it can take, you know, from, from, a, from research to production in a car, it almost takes seven years. Um, and then, of course, uh, things like image quality assessment is something uh, that I also manage at Yalo and all this kind of projects. Um, just to give you a start of uh, why AI, I think you know, you know why AI is important, so I, I probably don't give you, uh, like, you know, this high level pitch in a way, but uh, it's just to give you like a first start why this is important, you know, that most value companies these days, you know, they are AI first companies. So um, if you look at the list, you can see, uh, first of all, most of the companies are either Americans or uh, Chinese companies, right? And um, the other thing that is very interesting is, most of them are, or I think all of them, are tech companies, right? Um, if we look closer at this, right, so why do they have in common? As I said, they are tech companies, and they really have very strong product that people love, right? For example, Google, you know, has Gmail, has uh, Google Maps, uh, Amazon, you know, has uh, AWS and all that stuff. And of course, they have a clear AI strategy on, on what to do and uh, how they use the data in their products, right? So in their products. And of course, they uh, spend a huge amount of R&D. So for example, uh, Amazon right, is spending three billion uh, on R&D every year just on this topic. So it's, it's a quite huge thing. Uh, where are we? So we are actually almost a tech company. So we're thinking about our revenue, so almost 80%. Um, we have also a product that people love, right? So for example, Yalo is a very nice product, right? Uh, we have Stepstone, we have Welt. Um, in terms of AI strategy, I think uh, we're still not there where we should be. So it's, it's uh, some companies, you know, they, they have state of the art machine learning uh, products and uh, stuff in production, but not everyone, right? And then um, in terms of R&D, I think we are still very, very far behind from, from all the te top tech companies. Um, another, looking at another dimension is uh, how do we become an AI company now, right? So, you know, if, if you think about this 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 word uh, that Ajmeer said, when if you are if you are a shopping mall, right, and you add the internet to it, you are not an internet company. You know, it's the same thing for us. If we we are we are a media company in the past, you know, we just added a website to it. It doesn't mean that we're an internet company, right? It's a lot about culture at the end of the day. And similarly, if you think about now, any company that you know would would be here, and we add deep learning to it, right? Like the most fancy thing these days, we are also not an AI. Company. So it doesn't make sense that you say, hey, we just hire a bunch of data scientists, uh, data engineers, right, and then we turn, we'll turn into this big AI company, an AI first company. Um, giving you another motivation why uh, or where we should go is looking at my iPhone. So this is my, the screenshot of my iPhone. And these are my three top apps. So I, 
and really use, uh, oh, you really can see that it's like uh, Apple Photos, uh, Google Maps, and Spotify. Um, I just pick it out because you know I use them a lot. You know, this is this is the things. So, what do these uh, apps have in common? Well, they are very smart, right? So they are very user friendly. They, they give a lot of user experience. Um, if we get closer into this, right? So if we go in Apple Photos, I use this almost every day. I have, you know. I don't know if it's like an Asian cliche, but you know, I have like uh, over 10,000 images on my uh, photos, right? And uh, you know, Asians love to take a lot of photos. So, uh, but you know, if you have 10,000 photos, it's really, really hard to basically look for things that you, you know, uh, took in the past, right? So it's very, very difficult. But you know, Apple is helping a lot. So they use machine learning basically to cluster, like classify things, for example, faces, right, or location to this. And this really, you know, helps me to use the product. And you know, this this also creates customer branding for them, a customer kind of loyalty, right? Because they all have these nice features. You know, the next when I would buy another phone, I would like, oh, cool, I would like to go buy the same phone because they offer me the same service already. Same experiment with Google Maps. Um, they use machine learning to predict traffic, right? Or also when would you arrive? So it's a very, uh, very interesting feature. You know that that actually people a lot, a lot of people use these days, and they they just you know see that as given, right? Um, Spotify, same thing. I mean, every one of us probably use Spotify. You know, this is uh, very simple, right? Um, they give you a very seamless experience of of, uh, of using music, right? And also, they, their recommendation really works really well for me. Um, so, the moral of the story. So, if we have, let's say, any company, and we replace any company with Axel Springer, and we add deep learning or you know any fancy machine learning technique to it, we're not going to turn into an AI company. Not overnight, right? So this is not something that we're going to be, you know, in tomorrow, or because we hire many, many of us in the, in the room, right? So we, what we look at is the moral story is users these days, you know, when we create products, they expect to be smart, right? So smart products is something that that uh, people expect today, and um, AI is only a part of the product at the end of the day, right? It's a technology, so uh, it's a technology that needs to be integrated with a lot of things, like great user experience, great software at the end of the day, right? and also a business model, right? So if you, if you have a great team with technologists, right, if you have a lot of uh, user experience design as well, right, it doesn't mean that this business model will also be successful with you, right? And of course, to do this, we need a culture, right? We need a culture basically that supports all these things, you know, that basically, you know, hey, let's have a clear strategy and vision for how does Azure Spring look like in five years, right? How will our product look like? How will the product of our units look like, right? Will they be smart or not, right? And we also need to have a clear recruitment strategy, right? We need to execute it, and then also we need to enable all of this, right? It's the same thing, you know, when, when you think about uh, 15 years ago, in every German company, it was like, how do we become digital, right? Because the internet was coming, so we need to train ourselves how do we do SEO now? How do we do marketing, online marketing, right? It's the same thing now. How do we become kind of like AI product manager or uh, AI software engineer, right? Or, you know, AI business uh, product manager. Um, and yeah, and also, uh, if you think about the future, you also have to think about the past. So, um, I, I, from my, from, this is my view because um, I've been with Yalina for over almost two years and basically over the two years, I did a lot of knowledge sharing with a lot of units, so for example, Bonya, Vision Meta, uh, SRI and Engineering, so a lot of companies, and I recognize that a lot of these companies, they're great, but some of them, they don't really have a strategy or, or a basic vision for, for where to go away with smart products. And um, they, actually what they do is they hire, of course, you know, everyone wants data scientists these days, you know, sometimes, you know, they have one or two, sometimes they have large teams, probably have Seth Stone, they have like, Many people, right? But then other companies, you know, have only one or two, and this is not very really sustainable, right? If you have only one or two person in the company doing this, and and then also we don't really have a standardized AI strategy across the group because you know uh, we don't give training to ourselves uh, in the recruitment process. Basically, you know, everyone is doing the same uh, different thing. You know, if you think about uh, job advertisement, right? Uh, everyone writes different things in the thing. You have different. Job titles, someone is called data scientist, someone is called big data engineer, someone is called data engineer, or uh, someone is called Hadoop engineer, Java engineer, or you, you name it, right? And of course, technology is also uh, a thing that is not really unified at the moment, right? It's like, you know, everyone is like starting to, to do something, right? Uh, some units are very ahead with deep learning, some are not, right? And then also, of course, um, open source is also a topic, you know. Uh, uh, if you think about open source, we don't really have an 
overall strategy as well, right? Um, like some companies are doing open source, some not, right? Some don't have a time risk, some are too small, right? So it's like, it's a lot of, like, I wouldn't call it a mess because it's like, you know, a lot of Axis Springer companies are uh, bought in, into into um, like these big corporations, right? And basically, it's 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 how it is, right? It's it's how we have to accept it and work with it. And and then of course we also have a lot of churn. I mean, over the last two two years, I've seen a lot of people leaving this company, like on all these units. But also, uh, they, if you if you think about the last uh, AI day, or I think I think the room was fuller. I think no, this room is it's quite okay, but still not like as as last time. Okay, so I talk a lot about like motivation uh, um, and also of course uh, the past, right? But what are we going to do now, right? I mean, uh, it's important to, to look into the future, right? And what we want to do. And I, I came with this idea up actually um, last year, um, I think mid of the mid of the uh, last year, and then, but then you know uh, the idea matured more end of last year, and basically. I had initial discussion with the board, so with Shani Kasper, talking about, hey, how can we actually do this, right? How can we establish something to contact all the things that I basically saw in the past with talking with people, with seeing with people, with, with working with people as well, right? And basically, uh, we just came up with this concept. It's still an idea, right? So it's, it's still not there, but you know, I, I want to work with all you guys actually also to kind of establish as well and also need an Basically, the, the idea is that uh, to create Azure Spring AI, right, which will become a unit actually of, of, of uh, our entire group, uh, basically to drive this whole innovation part. Uh, don't worry that you cannot read it, um, I have it here as well. So, the, the vision basically is, is to turn Azure Spring into an AI first company, right? AI first company basically is a culture aspect to basically to change the way how we will create our products differently in the future, right? So, if you th think about this vision, um, it's like at any other AI first company, like Google, Alibaba, AWS, right, and Amazon, right. So basically, they are just using this term, not you know, just because it's like a bullshit uh, business bingo, but it's just like you know, to give like, yeah, this is where we want to go, and this is how we want to use data and technology because to enable our use our products to be, become better, right. And our mission basically will come to to make like you know AI and machine learning accessible everywhere in the group. We also deliver like end-to-end -end products because you know uh, transformation you know needs also kind of a lighthouse uh, project, a lighthouse team as well. Um, we also in the future we want to do state-of-the-art AI research and then also communicate and like you know set the branding for all of us in some way, right? Because you know we, we also need it. because if you if you're part of Google, you're you're part like in the machine learning team, you're part of Google AI. Right. If you're part of Amazon in the AI team, you're part of Amazon AI. Right. If you're part of Facebook, you're part of Facebook Fair. Right. If you're part of you know the bigger team in Zalando, you're part of Zalando Research for for the for the research area. Um, okay. I talk about a lot of things, but what now? Right. So uh, the slides uh, looks really good, but uh, doesn't mean anything. Right. So we need actions. Um, so we're, we're, we're thinking about where we different options, okay, how do we shard this? So shard it be a, a separate entity or is it part of any other units, right? And uh, at the end we decided, okay, let's, let's start at Azure Spring Ideas Engineering, right? So um, I think most of you know, guys know Azure Spring Ideas Engineering, right? So Azure Spring Ideas Engineering is a subsidiary of Azure Spring as well. It's a, it's a, it's a consulting unit within within um, Azure Spring, and I call it actually, they are, we are an innovation team, right? So we, we bring innovation forward at the end of the day. And the good part or the advantage of Azure Spring Engineering so far is um, we have also a lot of free contracts, right? Free, free contracts already with a lot of companies. That means uh, one thing that is very important in the future is how can we ensure or make sure that we work together, right? From let's say our team with, with Stepstone or with Idealo or with other any units, right? Um, and of course, um, the mission of of of, uh, of uh, Azure Spring Ideas Engineering also kind of like you know uh, um, um, overlaps with, with with also the mission and vision of all Azure Spring AI basically, right? Basically, establishing Azure Spring as a tech brand, which is also very important. Um, in terms of mission, uh, I think I just broke it clear down a little bit more from from the overall mission. So what the IT will do is hey. 
Um, it should do consulting. It should also um, do training for, for the, uh, everyone as well. Um, then we also want to implement AI use cases. So not only just talk, but also do end-to-end -end delivery, right? And then overall, the goal is to establish uh, best practices uh, for AI, right? Across the group, across everyone. And basically, and then of course, uh, devise an applied uh, a strategy for applied research and also open source. I will talk about all these points more in detail because, um, um, as I said, it's a, it's a plan, right? So uh, things will change. We will pivot, we will do something else, right? Uh, when things will not work. So it's not like, you know, a, a static framework. Um, in terms of team, um, we will, I, we got first headcounts for, for creating an AI team as well um, within Axel Springer. So uh, in terms of skills, you know, we'll have like the typical stuff, you know, that you have knowledge in machine learning, but also our focus will be very, very strong on, on software engineering skills. Because at the end of the day, um, we, we will want to have full stack software machine learning engineers that will also take things into production. Okay, so let's come to the consulting delivery and stuff part. I, I will not go as in any part so much in detail, but I try to you know, um, like, you know, give you a first idea of how things could work, right, or what we are planning in the way. So in terms of consulting, we, we want to do end-to-end -end delivery, right? So it's not just, you know, we come in and, hey, uh, Juan, it was nice talking to you. Well, this is uh, the five, six use cases that you th we think is good, right? But we also want, you know, uh, have this knowledge, you know, uh, that we have as a, as, like a, as a best of practice team, basically implemented in the company as well, right? In your company, in your unit. Um, and there is a lot of offerings that we could also do. For example, you know, some companies are at the beginning of their AI journey, right? So it means, hey, wow, maybe we need to talk to the C level, right? About what kind of use cases are possible, right? Uh, and then when it when it's this case, you know, we can also think about, okay, we now have certain use cases. So how we break this down for to create like a first minimal viable product, right? And then uh, some companies maybe don't have any data scientists uh, at all, right? Or any head of data science. At, at all as well, right? So, you know, in, in some companies, they just hire data scientists, data scientists, senior data scientists, and, and, they, and then they always think, hey, it's gonna work out, right? So they will kind of like, you know, uh, AI utilize me. So I will become an AI company because I just hire one or two data scientists. And what we could imagine is like, you know, having a head of data science service, right? Like, hey, uh, what do you need kind of structure to, to become successful? How do you utilize this, right? Is a central strategy very good in your team or do you need to put it uh, in your, in your um, product units, right? And then of course, we also want, um, if people want to do us as well, we also want to deliver, right? So we also want to deploy these machine learning models at the end of the day. Um, of course, this is something that we don't want to do like in five years because we're we, we're not a consulting company, right? And we don't want to uh, do this because the our long-term goal is basically to, to create software as a service in the future, right? So, for example, if you if you create a, a very nice uh, framework, right, that you also source to at one company, right, maybe another unit might be also interested to in this, right? Um, I'm going to talk about uh, taking an example for this as well. Um, and of course, in terms of, as I said, in the product life cycle, we want to cover the entire life cycle. So it's not only, you know, from, from, from the ideation, you know, to, to data review, but also to taking it into production. Um, yeah, so these are, we also did a task in terms of mapping. So this is what I said in terms of software as a service. Um, we, we came up, you know, uh, hey, this is things that people are working on. You know, at Idealo, we are working on image aesthetic, product recommendation, or also product classification. Vision Media is also, you know, could, you know, benefit from image aesthetic, right? Even the Aviv group, right? With Imovelt, uh, Cirugia, right? And the idea basically is, uh, you know, create in the future, create this kind of marketplace. So you have this access uh, however you name it, the yeah, cloud service, right? Uh, and then you have different topics under that. So you have a service that's just doing computer vision, your services that you're doing uh, NLP, right? And then you have like recommendation services. Um, and Initial steps could be like, you know, just to give you like a very realistic example of, hey, look, at Liado, we're, we're doing hotel training, right? So it actually also went live uh, um, two and a half months ago, right? So it means, um, hey, cool, could we use, for example, the hotel image ranking for other stuff? Let's say for Immovet or uh, Tomfian Wohnung or Synogea, right? Or, or Build and Vent, you know, for, for other stuff. So there are other use cases that we could think of. For example, um, let's 
what you also created in the other is this load high resolution, right? So you take a very small shitty image, right? Can we use it uh, to to make it larger in, in other units, right? So like kind of to use more synergies across all of the units at the end of the day. Um, then a very important part of this whole enablement is is of course training. So I think you know in, in a lot of uh, companies you probably uh, or in your day to day business you will probably face with product managers or product owners or or business C level people right who will talk about like yeah I know what I want I know what AI is right I just need you to deliver right I just need you to be here to to do what I want but the problem is most people don't know what they want so it's a if you think about our market it's very immature so if you go to the US right in Silicon Valley and especially in San Francisco there is a lot of product managers, technical product managers, you know, who, who actually used to be machine learning engineers, who used to be data scientists, right? And they have a much better idea of what is this, right? Or like giving realistic um, expectation. And also, of course, you have like sub-engineers, you have uh, designers, right? Or you have any other uh, person in the business field who actually wants to become data scientists and machine learner and, and are interested in this topic, right? And if you already know about the market, right? The market here in, in Berlin, is, is very tight, so it's very hard to get well a very good data scientists or machine learning engineers or research engineers or even data engineers. I mean, even harder than software engineers, right? And and then of course you have a lot of competition. So you have Amazon here, you have uh, Salando here, and also of course last, last, uh, since last year Google is also here now, right? So uh, it's, it's it's a war for talent, and basically we cannot compete with this um, if we don't you know create our own people internally. Right? So training will be very important, and the goal for the training is not only going into like tech people, but also non-tech people, right? So we want to enable everyone uh, basically to think AI, right? To think like machine learners at the end of the day, right? Um, and the format could be, you know, we do class swap training, or we also like uh, um, go to the company itself. Okay, in terms of best practices, uh, what we want to establish is, is something. Um, that that it worked successful for, for me uh, in the past and also uh, at every company that I basically put it in uh, and also at the other. Basically we have this um, exploration phase, production phase, right, that I want to establish as well across uh, a lot of units, basically. and Because, um, you know, when you think about machine learning, data science, or, you know, creating smart products, uh, people still, you know, are not really sure what to do, right, because uh, they, they very, um, Underestimate um, the, the complexity in these things, right? So a lot of our work is very like, hey, we have this cool data set, let's try that. Or we don't have data at all, right? So how can we create a product, you know, release this feature, right, and then collect data as much as possible? Or we don't have data at all and we don't have users, right? How can we use mechanical Turk basically to collect data as much as pos possible, right? Because you know, one one common thing that you probably also hear in your companies is like. Yeah, we hired you because we have a lot of data, uh, and you're just here because you have to make use of the data, right? But I must say, you know, that 90% of the data is actually shit. It's crappy, right? It's data that is not useful at all, right? Because this data is not supervised. This data is not labored, right? This data doesn't give you anything. And some most of the companies, you know, they have a high expectation. Yeah, the data is just there, so you just come and uh, do something out of it, right? And uh, uh, why can you not do it? Why why are we not more like Google and all this stuff, right? And the thing is, they don't. They like a strategy of of of, uh, of labeling, right? They like the strategy of where to go, and this is the problem. And, um, and to counteract it, it's very good, you know, to have kind of like best practices. Where how can we, you know, uh, do this kind of things, right? And we need still like you know that's why I call it exploration. The exploration phase is like you know. Where can we experiment? And then, of course, when when we have something, you know, we also take it to production, right? So, for example, um, uh, Yado, you know, Yado is also has a lot of legacy, right? Um, it, it's uh, it's crazy how much legacy they still have. Uh, if you think about this, but um, even in such an uh, environment, uh, my team, right, we managed to take things in production. Not everything went to the production, but some of the things. It's a lot of hard work, but uh, we follow a certain kind of practice to do these kind of things as well. Um, same thing for, 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 for software engineering. Um, I'm a big fan of extreme programming, so uh, there's things like pair programming, CICD, right, API first, uh, lean startup thinking, test group development, so things like, you know, that people actually only know from software engineering, um, but this is also very important for data science in general, because uh, a lot of people, you know, who are hired as data scientists, 
they might think, oh, yeah, I'm just here, you know, just to create some Tableau dashboard, or I'm here to basically uh, uh, visualize something, right? But at the end of the day, um, the, the, the most impact that we can do is to take things in production, and when things are in production, it's a sovereignty uh, project, right? And there's a lot of things that we data scientists need also learn from, from software engineers. Um, in terms of technology, stack is the same, I think. Uh, um, I would say I'm, I'm quite a dictator in terms of technology, and, and I think a lot of other companies are doing it away. I think a lot of companies just, you know, when they hire, it's like, yeah, you can do whatever, uh, uh, because they don't know what kind of uh, uh, problem it will cause, right? So I think for me, uh, in general, I want to establish Python as the as main language in the future for everyone, right? And Python 3.3, not 2, right? So <laughs> this is something very important, and then. Um, work along this, right? So uh, you know, when you when you think about libraries, when you think about technology stack, it's, it's an abundant, right? So what's what's the choice to choose between TensorFlow versus PyTorch, right? Versus Keras and so on, right? Um, I mean, everyone can do things differently, but the thing is, we need to find a common ground, right, for our research. For example, if you go to Google, uh, I don't think that uh, a lot of people are using PyTorch, right? If you go to Facebook, you know, I think a lot of people are using PyTorch, right, versus uh, TensorFlow, right? We also have to make the decision at the end of the day, uh, because at the end of the day, they are the same thing. They're not, you know, sometimes, you know, they, they're giving you different features, they're giving you different uh, uh, benefits, right? But at the end of the day, you are solving just, it's a tool, right? It's a tool that solves a problem. And we need to basically work towards it and maybe also change it, but we also need some kind of standards at the end of the day. Um, in terms of research and open source, so this is something that is also very important and uh, hasn't really been done so far a lot in, in our company as well, right? Um, so why is research important? Um, I mean, research is very important because, you know, uh, it doesn't work this way that, yeah, uh, we are such bring up, we're too small, you know, uh, we cannot compete like Google and Salerno, right? Uh, and we just, you know, take all the libraries that they built for us, right? And then we're just going to use it, right? It's not going to work this way. So, uh, no one is going to gonna build things for us, right? We can use it, right? And then, but we also need to give back, right? We need to give back. Uh, what other people are doing and what we are doing, right? And this is important because um, applied research will not will keep us competitive, right? Because, you know, one thing is, is correct. We have a lot of data, but, you know, we haven't used the data in the, in the correct way. If we use the data in the correct way, we can also create a lot of tools that make sense for other people as well, for other the units, right? So, for example, if StepStone is doing something very useful for the other, right? Why should not Yahoo yeah, use it as well? And why not use? Why should not Spring right, use it as well? Right for all of us. So why do we only keep it for us? Because at the end of the day, we are benefiting uh, from tools that is built by so many other companies. Right. So we're using tools from Google. We're using tools from Facebook. We're using tools from Zalando, from Amazon. Right. And the long-term goal is basically, you know, to, to create a, a research lab, you know, where you have research scientists, uh, where you have uh, research engineers, right, who work on explainable AI, AutoML, uh, compression is a very important topic in the future, and also edge computing, right? So uh, I think not a lot of us have, have thought so far about, like, what happens when you have a deep neural network on your mobile phone, right? I think, you know, uh, this is very difficult because, you know, everyone thinks, yeah, it's very cool, but, you know, a deep neural network is very slow when you have a lot of parameters, right? And what do you think about, like, the user experience when you put it on the phone, right? This is something that we also need to think about in the future and to work on this because uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's very important for also our survival as a company. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, there's still, like, a lot of open questions, right? How can we fund it? So this is still open. And maybe you know we can also leverage government grants as well, right? A lot of companies are doing this. So basically, uh, the German government, uh, you know, also have some research grants out there now, right? How we fight for this, you know, as a company? How do we uh, have partnerships with universities as well, right? To do this. And yeah, open source. Um, I think it's it's very important. So this is these are six projects. Uh, you know, I just put out. Um, from Iliano. Um, Iliano, you know, when I joined Iliano, uh, I think, you know, they, they wanted to do open source, but open source, you know, is something, 
it's just you, know, you cannot just write you are doing open source, right? So you have a, you need a strategy to do open source. You need a brand to do open source. You need people who commit this. You need to give people time to do this, right? And this is very important because open source um, not only helps us to get better people, right? So for example, you know, uh, in this case, for example, um, for one project we have almost seven stars already, and uh, we just started it with this actually only one year ago, right? So it's, it's very important because you know, people, when at Yado, they go on the Yado GitHub page, right, or they check everything, right, and they say, ah, cool, they are doing open source projects, they're also doing machine learning, right? So you know, it gives also uh, kind of like uh, future, potential candidates, your future colleagues a chance to, you know, will, uh, a glimpse on what you want to work on, right? And I think it's also very important to work on things because, you know, this not only uh, builds up your own brand, so you will, you know, uh, yeah, I'm the owner of this project, you know, you will get, be kind of proud of this project, right? But also, you know, you will start to get feedback, right? So if you are putting things out, right? You know, you put it on Twitter, you write a blog post, or medium of this, right? People will criticize you, right? They will say, your code is shit, right? Your code it doesn't work, or this is not good, right? Or your design is not perfect. But you know, this gives you the chance also, you know, to improve yourself as well, because uh, the community is, is the best point, basically, right? Where you get a lot of feedback. Because why would you only you know stay in this closed circle, right? Uh, when you would have millions of people out there who could give you feedback to improve your career and also your coding practices at the end of the day. Okay, I talk about things. I'm almost at the end. Uh, so what next? So our next steps is hiring, hiring, of course, right? So we're um, I haven't started at uh, um, Spring Ideas Engineering yet. So I will start in June. So it's very uh, soon. So in almost three weeks. Um, or four weeks, <laughs> um, and basically uh, I will start uh, hire people, um, and I will also align on first projects. I mean, we already talked about uh, several units. We talk about ideas as well, right? Even Yago is still interested in working with us, right? Um, and then we want to do the first training for non-tech people because you know it's a lot of presets going on. It's not uh, uh, talking with people, right? And then of course uh, I need to you know pray for the idea, and also I kind of need your help as well, right? To to spread the word, you know, just to. Maybe uh, you can give me feedback afterwards as well, right? Whether you think everything is bullshit, right? Or, or you like the idea. Um, and yeah, so do what works. And for me, it's like just to do the right thing. And thanks. <laughs>